What's your fondest memory of being on campus? I love this. I love the whole bucolic part of, of University of New Hampshire. Longtime news anchor and New England TV icon Natalie Jacobson looks forward to trips back to her alma mater, the University of New Hampshire. There are so many more dorms. And of course, the that's still here. <laughs> Is it nice to be back? I love being back here. Makes you feel young again. <laughs> <laughs> here, the college memories flood back like the student curfew. If you wanted to leave campus, you had to have a note from your parents. Natalie graduated from UNH in 1965 and went on to become the first woman to anchor the evening news in Boston. I'm Natalie Jacobson. Good night. Over her 40 years in TV, she interviewed a number of U.S. presidents, New England sports figures, and celebrities. She's now written a book about her career, Every Life a Story. Every life is a story. Every person has a life, has a story. And a wonderful part of the job you do and that I used to do is being able to tell those stories. We sat down to talk about her story in the archives reading room at UNH's Diamond Library. I was enthralled with television. I, the, the whole medium knocked my socks off. One of her first jobs, writing a public service announcement for an orphanage. By golly, within a week or two, that orphanage had more good prospective parents than they needed. And I, I just thought, if one 30-second spot can change the lives for 47 kids and others, I'm in. This TV thing, this is power of the best kind, I'm in. She was determined to become a reporter, but breaking into the news business wasn't easy. One man just said on the phone, I, I, you know, there's no point in an interview, we just don't hire girls. You could say that then. After the mid-70s, you couldn't say that anymore. When she was hired at our sister station WCVB in Boston, she became the only woman on the news team for the next two years. So I got, you know, the, the stories that you wouldn't consider terribly important. But that's okay, because I, I figured I had to pay my dues. So I didn't mind um, at all. And I, I had a lot to learn. Eventually, she became the main anchor alongside her then-husband, Chet Curtis, leading the station's coverage of major stories and events. We were just lucky, too, that we just clicked together. It somehow worked. And it worked personally, and it worked professionally for a long time, 25 years. She returned to the Granite State many times to cover the New Hampshire primary, and scored newsmaking interviews, including one with presidential candidate Ted Kennedy's wife, Joan. And that was an issue then, because they were estranged, and if he won, would she go to the White House? She writes that her determination comes from her father, a first-generation American of Serbian descent. He went from peddling razor blades to being the president of Gillette North America. That's our country. It offers opportunity. And yet, it was her father who almost didn't let her go to college. It was a different time. He just didn't see any point to it. I said to him, Dad, girls go to school now. <laughs> so what changed his mind? My godfather. God bless my godfather. Because <laughs> he had a daughter exactly my age, and he said, where's Natalie going to school? And my father said, maybe we should reconsider this issue of you're going to school. And I said, really, Dad? I was so angry with him. Um, it's too late. It's April of my senior year. I don't need your help. I'll get a job. I'll put myself through school. I'll be just fine. <laughs> well, once I got off my high horse and th decided <laughs> maybe a little help on the tuition might be helpful, uh, it just happened that someone at UNH, a parent I applied here, uh, must have turned down their invitation and they had a spot. And I took it. <laughs> you know, as a kid who grew up in the city of Chicago, smack in the city, to be able to come to a place like this, oh, what a gift. And my dorm, the Hitchcock Hall, was right back here somewhere. My sophomore year was right in this room right here. 
And I remember my roommate and I snuck out one time after hours. They didn't find us. <laughs> and because of the curfew, all the after your date, you're, there'll be a hundred people out here. Hug, hug, smooch, smooch. <laughs> so crazy. As a student, Natalie did freshman camp, joined a sorority, was a cheerleader, and a member of the sophomore Sphinx. Our mission was to make freshmen feel comfortable. So we'd wander around, give people directions, help them with signing up for classes, whatever. I loved it. It was being an ambassador for the school. In 1990, she returned to deliver the commencement address. She attends alumni events and sits on one of the university's boards. You and I, your school never leaves you. It's part of you, you know? She admits that she was never comfortable with the public part of her job, but in her book, she opens up about the events in her private life that gave her a new perspective. But then, with the death of my mother and then the birth, of my daughter and being the, this hugely pregnant woman on television and having people um, be there for me. I got over it and then just realized we're all in this together. Um, I'm in the best job in the world. Look how kind people are. Um, I always say uh, it was a pivotal moment and it made me appreciate everything, more than I ever had. Now retired, family is the focus. What do you call yourself as a Serbian uh, grandmother? The Serbian word for grandmother is Bubba, so I'm Bubba. My daughter and, and her children, now four and six, are the, are my whole life. She's now working on the next chapter to her story. You say you're not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm trying to figure out what my next move is. <laughs>